Andrew Tate is back. After spending three months in jail for alleged counts of human trafficking and rape, he's a free man. Well, almost free. He's still under house arrest. He comes out, he says he read the Quran, did push-ups, announces an emergency broadcast, and then cancels it. What is happening? Well, what's happening is something that is time-tested and has happened many times before. And in this video, I share with you what is happening, what's going to happen, and how you can use what is happening and what's going to happen to improve your life and your business. Let's get into it. Hey guys, my name's Yahya, founder and creator of Record Breaker, where I help you shatter past your highest revenue record months in the shortest amount of time. So we've talked about Andrew Tate and his marketing strategies on this channel before. If you haven't seen the video, I'll leave it in the description. He's known for his branding, his marketing, his bold and controversial moves on the internet. Now we don't aim to judge, we just aim to see, observe and learn. If there's one thing he's known for, it is the ability to shift his audience's perspective around the world instantly. His marketing is top notch and whether you like him or you hate him, you must admit the fact that he is always relevant. People listen to him. Even if they listen to him to judge him or to hate on him, they still listen to him. So what exactly happened? Right after he was released, he announced an emergency live stream so the public and the people could hear his point of view, his side of the story. And then he cancelled it. Now, there could be some restrictions because of the judges, because of the fact that he's under house arrest, because of maybe his legal team told him, maybe it's not a good time right now to go out straight away and have a live stream. There could be a whole bunch of things. We don't know exactly what it is, but I can see a recurring theme. And I've seen it many, many, many times before. And that theme, ladies and gentlemen, is timing. Anyone can have bold opinions and post them online. In fact, there's a bunch of people posting very bold things online as we speak, but none of them is as relevant as Andrew. because the most important thing about his marketing is his timing. So not only does he know what to say, he also knows exactly when to say it. And so what you see here is an example of them seizing the opportunity. Now let me break that down for you. Back when I used to work in Pfizer looking after the consumer division, we used to do a lot of events. It was called BTL activations below the line, meaning events in malls, events in cinemas, lots of stuff to get people engaged with the brand and to do a lot of fun activities, get them to feel the resonance of the brand. And as is the case in any event, there would always be problems. Things would always go wrong. And so one fine day, I asked my event manager, I was like, dude, you've been doing it 20 years. How do you cope? Like, how do you handle it when things go wrong? He said, Yaya, the rule of thumb in event management is that whenever something goes wrong, pretend like you planned it that way. Now, let me give you two examples of two of my clients that I work with. The first example is a client of mine who's a storytelling coach. She helps people have charisma, have confidence on stage, writing a book, speaking on podcasts, allows their story to develop and allows their inner voice to develop. She helps people with all of that. She was arranging a large scale event where a whole bunch of people were attending and the ticket size was somewhere around two to $3,000. And so one day she comes to me and she's like, yeah, you know what? I planned it to be two to $3,000, but now we have an in-house chef. Now we've got a great place. We're paying rent on this. We've arranged transportation. We've arranged a lot of things that previously I hadn't accounted for. So the ticket size is now close to $5,000 and I'm feeling bad asking people to pay me more money. What should I do? So I was like, all right, what you're going to do is you're going to change the event entirely. What that means is not change the back end of the event, but essentially the marketing of the event. So it's going to go from a large scale mass event to an intimate exclusive event that very few people will attend. And so her marketing shifted and her ticket size went from $3,000 to $10,000. She went from getting 30 people attending at $2,000 to getting 10 people attending at $10,000. Making a lot of money, but also having less stress for herself because she works one-on-one, -on -one, having more time to spend intimately with each client of hers, creating better breakthroughs, bigger results, so on and so forth, and enjoying herself during the process. Let me give you another example of another client. This client is an Ayurvedic health coach. She helps people reverse aging, increase energy, reverse metabolic problems, get rid of disease. It's basically miracles. And she was having a problem where she couldn't sign on more people because she was spending a lot of time with every single person. According to her, her intake was about 24 hours spent on every person before she even started working with them in order to study them and diagnose them. So she was like, yeah, what do I do? I'm capped out. I can't do anything else. There's only so many people I can work with. So I was like, all right, we're going to do two things. We're going to increase your price and your marketing is going to shift 
from mass marketing to very, very exclusive experiential marketing. And in the past, we'd increased her price from $1,000 to $5,000 and she was very hesitant. We increased her price from $5,000 to $10,000. And the way we justified it was people get to work with her and prevent the healthcare cost of going to hospitals and having operations and surgeries and being on medications for the rest of their lives, which is close to 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars depending on what problem you have and that's how her marketing shifted now she's working with even less people making even more money so how does this relate to andrew well we don't know why the emergency live stream was cancelled but the live stream was on a public platform it was going to be viewed and attended by lots of people and now the announcement is the live stream is cancelled were going to be available on hustlers university so essentially what andrew did was he announced first to be there on a public platform for people to see him. And then he's like, nope, I'm not on a public platform anymore. I'm on a paid platform. You have to pay to be part of Hustlers University so that you can even hear me speak. So what's gonna happen next? Well, the next thing is Andrew is not going to be sharing most of his content on public platforms. He's not going to be available on free platforms. And I'll tell you where I heard of this strategy first. So I'm a huge fan of Tim Ferriss, the author of The 4-Hour Workweek, The 4-Hour Body, an angel investor in many huge startups. And Tim Ferriss runs a blog which doesn't have a whole lot of followers, but he makes a lot of money. And his philosophy is it is better to have 1,000 raving fans than to have 100,000 lukewarm people who kind of sort of like you. And that's exactly the strategy that Andrew Tate is now following. He's going to have his fan base behind a paid wall in this case the real world he might even move a partner with a paid platform where he gets a good commission of all the people joining him and that's where he's going to talk he's going to create content he's going to market and so what his funnel will look like for those of you unfamiliar with a funnel it's essentially how internet marketeers get someone to first know about them then like them then trust them then buy from them his funnel is going to be all his previous content and teasers on free platforms where people will see his message, get to know about him, either like him or hate him, then pay money, which is going to be the middle of his funnel, then pay money to be part of the real world or Hustlers University and invariably either buy a program or a digital product that he's going to sell or join his platform. And that's how Andrew's going to operate in the future. Now, if you're someone who's facing a lot of backlash or your current market doesn't appreciate your product or your service, just like my clients, or you know you have something amazing, but you don't want to give it to every Tom, Dick and Harry because you have limited capacity, this is the strategy for you. It is better, in the words of Tim Ferriss, to have a thousand raving fans who will buy whatever you want them to buy from you than to have a hundred thousand people who are kind of sort of fans of yours. So you can go the exclusive route. Instead of having huge events, you can have smaller exclusive events. Instead of working with a lot of people at a low price point, you can work with a few people at a higher price point. I hope you you found this video helpful. I'm out of here. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.